Welcome to Let's Talk Socials, the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to stand out on social media and be seen as the experts that they really are. The latest updates and trends from the social media space presented by me, your social media strategist and coach. Now, let's get started. Let's Talk Socials. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Socials. Usually... I record these podcast episodes in my home office. But today I am recording this episode on my bed because when I was just about to record this episode, I saw a mouse in my home office and I have managed to shoo it out of my office, but it ran straight into my bedroom and into our closet. So for the last two hours or so, I have been sitting on my bed in front of the closet with a piece of cheese on the ground <laughs> until my partner could come with some live mouse traps. And yeah, now we're just waiting for it to run into one of the traps. And I don't want to leave it because if I leave the room and it hides somewhere else, I won't ever find it again. So yeah, that is my current setup, but that's not why you came here. You want to learn about testimonials. So let's talk about how we can put testimonials on social media. We all know that showcasing testimonials, client reviews, client opinions are an important part of our social media presence. Testimonials in general help us to build trust, which is especially important if you are running a service-based business because it is quite hard for the prospective client to understand what they can expect from your service before they actually experience it. This is a big part of what I have studied at university in my service marketing specialization because there's a huge difference between marketing a product that someone can see, they can feel, they can touch before they make the purchase and marketing a service that is not tangible, that is dependent on you as a service provider and also on the overall experience that your customer will have, which they will only have once they consume the service. And this is probably why great testimonials are even more important for services than products. To give you an idea of just how important they are, here are some facts. 92% of customers read online reviews before they make a purchasing decision. 72% of consumers say that positive testimonials increase their trust in a business. And a really interesting one, 88% of consumers trust online testimonials as much as recommendations from friends or family. This goes to show just how much people trust strangers on the internet over people that they actually know in real life. That being said, in this episode, I want to talk to you a little bit about how you can showcase testimonials on your social media pages other than posting a screenshot, which is not very aesthetic most of the times, or just copying the text from, I don't know, either Google or Facebook or wherever you got the testimonial into one of the Canva templates and just posting that. Of course, those can work as well, but I want to give you a few more ideas to keep things interesting and so you don't always have to post the same boring testimonial posts like everyone else. As you know, social media is becoming very, very crowded and you don't stand out with content that everyone else makes as well. Unfortunately, and this is a hard pill to swallow for some, you don't get to have an exceptional social media presence by putting in an average amount of effort. But the good news is that I have a few ideas for you on how you can better present your awesome testimonials so that you get more clients from Instagram and all the other socials. Now, before we talk about different ways to present testimonials on social media, we need to get them in the first place, right? So how do we do that? How do we get testimonials from people? I want to say that probably 95% of the people that you will work with in your business or that will purchase your products, they're not just going to wake up one day and be like, oh yeah, 
I want to write a review today for this service that I just had or review a product that I recently bought. Unless there are these kind of people that just love to share their opinion about everything and anything online. I know some people from school that actually write reviews almost as a hobby. <laughs> and I'm not talking about reviews that are like three sentences. Yeah, it was a great product, would recommend. No, like they're big reviews that have like different paragraphs, different themes, subparagraphs, different specifications. So unless your customers are these kind of people, you will have to ask them for a review. The easiest way to do that is to actually set up an email sequence that starts right after they have made a purchase. Obviously, that depends on the kind of product that you have. But usually you would have a first email that confirms the purchase. And for a digital product, you would immediately deliver it. For a physical product, you would then also have an email with the shipping details and so on. Once the goods then have been delivered, either physically or digitally, you would not immediately send them a request for review, but you would wait a little while, right? Because people actually want to use the product before they talk about it. So what you could do is, first of all, find out how long people need to use your product for before they feel confident enough to write a review about it. This will obviously, again, depend on your product. If you have, let's say, a physical product like a book, you need to find out how long it takes people to read this book. Do they usually read it in a week, two weeks, a month? To understand that, you can either ask some of your past customers, say, hey, did you immediately start reading the book? Maybe someone that you know or some of your family members that bought the book. And just ask them how long it took them to finish it. Or you can have a look at your data that you have from past uh, reviews and see how long after they were written. And that could give you an initial idea as well. With other products, it might take your audience a little bit longer. Let's say for skincare that has a claim that it will change your skin after two weeks. You could wait at least two weeks so that you get more powerful testimonials. Because obviously, if they haven't had time to let the product sit and do its work, they won't see any great results yet. So the first step, find out how long it usually takes people to be ready for a review and then use that knowledge to set up this email sequence and send out an email where you ask them for a testimonial. Usually people are not that great at writing reviews for a few reasons. First of all, they always forget about it. Or they say, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And they forget or they just put it at the bottom of their to-do list. So you kind of have to run after them and ask them for testimonials multiple times. Secondly, they think, well, what do I get from it? So what's in it for me when if I write that review? And a good way to give something back to them is to give them a discount code for their next purchase. Or you could think of another incentive for them like free shipping, for example. If you're a service-based business, it is obviously a little bit different because you can ask for testimonials quite soon after your session or your service has ended. Like if I go to the hairdresser, I don't need a week to think about how my experience has been and if I like my haircut. Obviously, if you're running something like a coaching program, don't ask them for a testimonial after the first session right away, but maybe wait a week or so after the program has ended. Especially as a service-based business, I always like to already tell them that I will be reaching out for a testimonial after we finish working. Mainly also so that I can tell them that it is for me to improve my service. And I have to say most people are actually quite happy to leave a review because they feel like they can contribute something and I will listen to their opinion and they will actually improve my service as well by that. Or if you want to go via the social media route, you can obviously also send certain customers a message on Instagram and ask them for a testimonial directly there. This obviously only works if you work together with people that have a public profile as well, right? So if you work together with individual people that don't have a business profile, but only a private profile, 
then yeah, don't send them messages because that's a bit pushy and nobody likes that. The Instagram route in general is a bit less pushy, less official than let's say um, an email. So it can be a great way for people that want to interact a bit less formally because you can just write them a message and be like, hey, so I'm wanting uh, some feedback for a session. What did you think about it? What could I improve? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? And it might feel a bit less like effort to them to just send you back a message rather than filling out a whole testimonial form or writing a review on some page. But in general, don't be shy to ask a second or third time if they could please write a testimonial. People get really busy and if they have already expressed to you in the past, maybe while you were working together, that they are happy about your service, I don't think there's any reason for them not to write you a review. Unfortunately, and I think this is just part of being in business, not every one of your customers will write you a testimonial. I have been in this situation before that I worked with someone over multiple months on their social media and they always gave me very positive feedback. The results were great, but once we stopped working together and I asked for a testimonial, they said, yeah, sure, I'd love to write one. But even after multiple follow-ups, I just never got one. Sometimes you will simply just not get it and that is just how it is. But... Luckily for you, one of the ideas that I have included in this episode is really useful also for those situations when you don't have an actual testimonial, but you still want to highlight the work that you did together. So the first idea are case studies. If you don't have a formal testimonial, but still want to showcase what you worked on with a client and what you have achieved, most importantly as well, you can use a case study. So, of course, if you have an actual testimonial from that time that you work together, you can also still include that in that post and maybe have the testimonial as the last slide. What I mean with a case study is actually breaking down step by step what you worked on. So what was the initial situation of your client? What was the situation afterwards? And obviously, how did you get them to this point? Obviously, with products, you would maybe talk about their before, of course, if you know it, their after and the product that they bought from you. That would be the solution in this case. So the how. I will link an example of a case study that I did a few weeks ago on my Instagram in the show notes so you can see what I mean with a case study. But in general, how you would structure a post like that is have an interesting cover page. So I think mine was something like how I helped my client be excited about social media again or something like that. Then I quickly introduced the client. I talked about the before situation and the reason for them to work with me. Then I outlined what we worked on and the final result. And at the end, I put the testimonial that I had. But I could have also left that away because the post in itself was already um, interesting enough or valuable enough. With a case study in general, it's just about describing what went down so that other people who are in a similar before situation understand that you are the right person to help them to get to the after situation. Because that is what testimonials are about, reducing the buyer's risk. If they can understand what others have experienced when they have used your service or they bought your product, that will decrease their risk of making a wrong purchase and losing money. And losing money or losing things that someone already has in general, that is a stronger motivation for people than winning something. There have been lots of experiments about this as well, that people are more afraid of losing a hundred dollars than winning a hundred dollars. So with testimonials, we can decrease that, that risk that people are feeling. A second idea for testimonials are video testimonials. If you can get someone to talk on video what they loved about your offer, you, my friend, have won the jackpot. Two out of three people say they are more likely to buy something after they have seen a video from a previous customer. 
And 77% of people who have watched a testimonial about a product or a service say that it motivated them to make a purchase. As always, I will link all of the studies that I mentioned here and from which I got the data that, I, that I'm talking about here. I will link that in the show notes as well so you can have a look and read on further if you're interested. Now, video testimonials work for a few different reasons. First of all, if the person in the video uses the product or talks about the service, it helps to visualize what that can look like for the viewer. It also helps the viewer understand the backstory of the other customer and compare that to their situation, like I mentioned before. If they understand that the other customer was in a similar situation and they don't have this problem anymore now that they are currently still experiencing, that is very powerful. And a video testimonial also shows what kind of impact your service or product had on people's life. And that is one of the most important and most authentic ways to market your product because people always believe other people more than what the company says about their products. And lastly, video testimonials are also an easier way to consume a testimonial, in my opinion, because often people write really long testimonials, like I said before, that nobody ever is going to read. So if I see like a, a whole page of testimonial, I, I'm just going to skip. I'm not going to read that. But if I see a video that someone starts with, this product changed my life or something similar, that catches my attention immediately. Just a little side note here about testimonials in general. If you find that your customers aren't really great at writing reviews, because to be honest, there's a little bit of skill involved in writing an actually helpful and powerful testimonial, you can help them by providing a few questions that they could answer in their testimonial. Because in the end, you want these testimonials where people say, before I tried this product, my life was like this and that. But then after I tried it within a week, I saw these crazy results and now I feel like this and that. Those are the kind of testimonials that really show a transformation and position your offer as the solution to the problem. Of course, reviews like, yeah, I would recommend this service, um, definitely go with this company. They're great, but the more detail you can get in a review, the better. So you can provide questions like, what was your life before trying out this product? What problems did you experience? Why did you decide to book in now or purchase now? And what does your life look like right now after using my service or the product? Obviously, you need to adapt them to the kind of business that you have and the offer that you have. But in general, it can be a good idea to provide some guidance because I found that people are then also more likely to actually write the testimonial. I think the number one reason why people on don't end up leaving a review is because they're lazy <laughs> and it takes a little bit of effort to think about your experience, put that into writing. So the easier you can make it for them, the more likely you are to actually get some reviews. Back to the video testimonials. One final statement here. They are a fantastic way to help your customers understand whether a product or service is for them and to help them make a purchase decision. And lastly, if you don't have any formal testimonials, but you have lots of screenshots from people that are either from a DM or comments on your posts, you can use those in a post as well. So I had an idea of what you could do, which is basically you would make a reel of your product or if you're service-based, then you could film yourself doing your service, whatever that looks like. You could put a trending audio, so some kind of nice music on it, and then have all the different screenshots appear on screen. If you can even make them appear in tune with the music, then it's going to be amazing. You probably already hear that I'm getting very excited about this. I live for coming up with content ideas. If you are one of my consulting clients. Um, I usually have Slack channels with my clients where we chat daily and uh, talk a bit about what they should be posting. You will get so many messages from me throughout the week that are like, oh, I just had this idea, we could do this and I will send you examples. And like, you're probably gonna get sick of me after a month or so because I send you so many ideas and I, I'm just, yeah, I, I live for content ideas. 
there's a reason why my clients are always impressed with my ability to make content out of anything. Like the other day, I made a post about how I learned how to bake sourdough bread. I don't know if you've seen it. It was one of my most popular posts of the last few months. Or the other time when I turned my flight from Christchurch to Wellington a few weeks ago into a content shoot for my client because I thought it would be amazing if she had a shot of her product that I had with me with the plane window in the background because she was featured in the Air New Zealand in flight magazine that month. So I was like, that would be perfect and we could use that on a social media post. So that's the kind of commitment that you can expect from me when we work together. That aside, I hope this episode was helpful in giving you a few more ideas on how you can showcase your testimonials, screenshots or even talk about your work if you don't have any actual testimonials that you can use. And because we're talking about reviews today and we also mentioned that you should just ask for reviews, I'm going to use this opportunity to ask you for a review of Let's Talk Socials. So if you enjoy these episodes, give the podcast a hopefully five-star review so that I can continue to make these episodes for you and invite interesting guests once in a while. Thanks again for listening and I will hear you next time when it's again time to talk socials.